As a Tresillian nurse, the two biggest topics we get asked about is sleep and crying babies. And here today we have Mickey with her beautiful seven-week-old baby, Mia, and we're going to discuss crying. So my question is, um, how do I tell the difference between cries when she's hungry or when she's tired? That's a really good question, Mickey, because most people think babies cry, um, that's the way that they communicate. But actually with small babies that can't really tell us what they're wanting. We talk about this thing called infant cues or baby cues, which is their facial expressions and their body movements. Mm. And that can help us distinguish what their needs are. And I think if you look at a cue as a single word, normally there's a group of these cues, these behaviours that babies demonstrate that sort of makes a sentence of what they're wanting. And often there's hunger cues, and the other one is tired cues, which you had asked about. So hunger cues can be the baby sucking their hand or their fist. They can be opening their mouth, smacking their lips, we call it. Certainly if you breastfeed, they're turning their head towards your breast if you're holding them like you are now, or to the bottle, they're facing the bottle. So they're hunger cues. And tired cues is the baby sort of saying, I need a break. So they'd be looking the other way where they might have been looking at you but turn their head the other way. Where, like, say, little Mia at the moment is very relaxed. If she were awake, they could be suddenly stiff, a little bit of jerky body movements, a bit of a frown on the forehead starting to grizzle. So that is a collection together is the baby saying, I need a break, and then you might think, OK, you've been up for a period of time. Perhaps I'll pop you to sleep. That all makes sense. Um, I think one, one thing I did wonder is that um, often she will clench her fists and I wonder if that's her being hungry or tired, but it sounds like it could be both. Some of these cues overlap and the clenching of fists and actually sucking on the fist often gets confused is the baby hungry, where it could mean that the baby's tired. So in addition to like looking at these cues, also put it in context what's happening around. So if you just fed her, that she's starting to suck on her fist, then you could probably think, okay, well, I've just fed you. You've been up a certain period of time now, so perhaps it's time to try to pop you to sleep. Mm -hmm. I do have one other question, and that is, um, my husband loves to play with Mia. Um, obviously, he misses out on feeding her. When is the best time, though, so that he's not making her grizzly unnecessarily? When we're talking back Mickey, with the cues of the baby, if Mia is looking at your face, her eyes are bright, um, she'd be smiling now mm -hmm. or making sounds. Is she doing that at yes, the moment? Yes, yeah. That's the best time to play, to play with her. We call that when the baby's quite engaged. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the optimal time to play when she's going to be more responsive. But it's important to, to be led by Mia. So if she was to turn her head to the side, then that might be her saying she needs a little break. If she was to turn her head back around again and still want to um, gurgle and smile back at you, then continue doing it. But if she stays looking the other way, then that's a cue, perhaps do something different. She needs a break and change what you're doing. So it's not any one time like after a feed or after a sleep, it's based on what the cues that she's exhibiting. Exactly. And you've made a good point there because you might hear about feed, play and sleep pattern yeah. of care, which is definitely what Tresillian does suggest to help babies learn the development of good sleep behaviours. But sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean that that play time has to be too lengthy or play could just be holding your baby just like what you're doing now. Okay, great, thank you.